By default, Vue.js projects created with the Vue CLI always show this ugly ass dash case title in the browser tab, regardless of what page or route we're on, which kind of sucks a big bowl of ass. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add dynamic page titles, which display both the name of the app and the name of the current page or route you're on as well. So right now we're on the home page and we see the name of our app, my app, and then home, the name of our route. And if we jump to the about page and we see about in the browser tab and for dynamic routes, such as a post page, I'm going to show you how to display information such as the name of the post in the browser tab as well. We're also going to be using environment variables and view router in this video as well. And this technique will work for raw Vue.js projects as well as Vueify, Vueify and Bootstrap View projects as well. If you're new here, my name's Danny. I'm an indie app developer and creator of Fudgip. If you want to learn about Vue.js, web development, app development and all that good stuff, click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get started by creating a new view project with the view CLI. So I'm just going to Google view CLI, jump to the view CLI website, get started installation. And if you don't have the view CLI installed, you'll need to make sure you have node installed first and you can get to that at nodejs.org and you probably want to install the one on the left. Once that's installed, you can install the view CLI with this command in your terminal and you should then be ready to create a new project. So I'm going to jump to creating a new project. And we just need to run view create and then the name of our project. So I'm going to jump to my terminal, which is just running within VS code, which is the editor I'm going to be using in this video. I'm just going to make sure I'm in the folder where I store all of my projects and run view create. Uh, let's call it view dash dynamic dash page dash titles. Uh, I'm going to choose manually select features and I'm going to enable the router and disable the linter just so we don't get loads of annoying messages. And then I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to choose view two because at the time I'm recording this frameworks such as Vueify, Vueify and Bootstrap View don't support view three. So I'm just going to use view two. Although this technique should hopefully work in view three projects as well. I'm going to choose no to history mode. I'm going to choose in dedicated config files. I'm going to choose no to saving this as a preset. Okay, it's finished creating the project and to launch it, we can just CD into the folder and run npm run serve. And at this point, you may want to add Vueify or Vueify or Bootstrap View to your project by running view add Vueify or view add Bootstrap dash view or view add Vueify. And just bear in mind that if you're using Vueify, then Vueify will overwrite your app.view file and remove your root of view component, which you're going to need for displaying the roots of the app. And I just have a Vueify version of the project that we're going to be doing in this video here. And I have the app.view file open. And all I've done is add the root of view component within this V main component. And I've added a couple of buttons to the end of the V app bar with links to the home page and the about page that you can see here. But I'm just going to be using raw Vue.js in this video. So I'm not going to add any of these frameworks. So I'm just going to drag the folder that it's created view dynamic page titles into VS code. And then to launch it, I'm just going to run npm run serve. And that's now running. So I'm just going to command and click on this link to open it in the browser. So right now our app always displays this view dynamic page titles dash case title in the browser tab, regardless of what page or route we're on. So to begin with, let's replace this with our app's name. Well, first of all, where is this coming from? Well, I'm just going to jump to our apps HTML page, which is in the public folder index.html and jump to the title tag. And we can see this title is coming from Webpack and Webpack is grabbing it from the package.json file from this name field here. But we can't just change this to something like best app ever because we see some squiggly lines because this property must be lowercase and it mustn't have spaces and other fancy characters as well. So I'm just going to change this back. And instead, I'm going to place our app's title into an environment variable. 
What's an environment variable? Basically just a variable that we can use anywhere within our app. And to set up environment variables, all we need to do is create a file in the root of our project. So I'm gonna to go to new file, and we wanna call this .env. I'm gonna open that up and add an environment variable here. And this document is basically just a list of key value pairs. So we'll set up an environment variable for our title. And I'll call it view underscore app underscore title. And I'll set that to best app ever. And we can add as many of these variables as we want here. So for example, we could have one called view app API and set this to an API URL or something like that. However, the names of these variables must always start with view underscore app underscore. And I'm just gonna have the one environment variable for the app title. And I'll save that. And in order for our app to be able to access these variables, we do need to restart our server. So I'm just gonna press Control C to kill the dev server and just run npm run serve again. And the app is now running again and we should have access to this environment variable now. So I'm gonna jump back to the index.html page, uh, back to this title tag. And I'm gonna replace this and this here down in this no script tag with process.env and then the name of our variable. So view underscore app underscore title. So this name that we specified here. So I'll save that. And we can now see our app title, best app ever, in the browser tab. And we can also use this variable anywhere within our app. And so let's say we use this variable in countless different places in our app. Well, then we decide to change the name of our app. We now only need to do this once by just changing the value of this environment variable. So if I just change this back to my app, let's say, and save that. And because we've changed this, we will need to restart the server again. Then if we reload the page, we now see my app in the browser tab. Okay, so we're now showing our app's title in the browser tab, so this is already a lot better, but let's also display the name of the current page or root in the browser tab as well. For example, home or about, depending on what page or root we're on. And I'm gonna do this using view router. So I'm gonna to go to source and router and index.js. And I'm gonna add a hook here or a navigation guard, which will be fired every time we change routes within our app. So I'm just gonna Google view router, jump to the view router site, get started, and then navigation guards. And we have this before each hook, which we can add here, which will be fired every time we change route. So I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna paste it after this const router here. And so this hook has three parameters, two from and next. The two variable gives us information about the route that we're going to. The from variable gives us information about the route that we just came from. And this next variable is actually a method which we need to fire within this hook in order for the app to actually load the next route. So I'm just gonna log out before each for now to make sure this is working. And I'll save that and open up the console. And we can see before each being logged out in the console. And if we jump to the about page, you can see it being logged out again. However, we can't actually see the root. We're only seeing these navigation items. And that's because now that we've added this hook, we need to actually fire this next method in order to load the route that the app is trying to load. So I'm just gonna fire that method here like that. Save it, and we can now see the routes being loaded as well. Okay, so this two variable gives us information about the route that we're going to. So I'm just gonna log that out instead of this string and save that. And if we look in the console, we can see an object being logged out with information about the route that we're going to. So we can see the path of the route, and we can see the name property as well. And this name property, is coming from this name property here in our array of routes. And so if we jump to the about page, we can see this two object being logged out again. And this time this name property is set to about. 
So we can grab this name property whenever we change root and add it to our document title, thus updating the browser tab title here. So this name property is going to be at two dot name. So let's add this name property to our document title. So to the title tag, which is on our index.html page. And we can do that by just doing document.title and setting that equal to a string. And so we want to set it to two dot name. Uh, I'll save that. Uh, we now see about in the browser tab here. And if we jump to the home page, we see home. However, we've lost our app's name. So let's also add our app's name here as well. So I'm just going to get rid of this two dot name. I'm going to add a template string with back ticks. And we'll add our app's name by using the environment variable that we set up. And just like we did on our index.html file, this is going to be at process.env.view underscore app underscore title. I'm just going to copy this and paste that here. And then we'll add a dash. And then we'll add the root name, which again is at two dot name. And I'll save that. And we can now see the name of our app, my app, dash, and then the name of the root home. And if we jump to the about page, we see about here instead. If you found this video useful so far, make sure you smash the like button and leave a comment. Tell me what you had for dinner last night. Okay, so we're now displaying the name of our app and the name of the root of our app in the browser tab. Well, what if we had a dynamic root? Let's say a root for displaying different posts. How could we display the name of the post in the browser tab as well? Well, first I'm just gonna set up a new component or a new view for displaying a post. So in the views folder, I'm gonna create a new file called post.view. And I'll add a template tag. And I'll just put a div with a class of post. And then inside that, I'll just add a H1, with the text. This is a post page and save that. Then I'm gonna jump back to router index.js and add a new root here to this roots array. I'll just duplicate this about one and I'll change the path to slash post slash and then colon ID because this is gonna be a dynamic root which expects an ID such as a post ID and I'll change the name to post and I'll just get rid of all these comments and this these comments as well and we'll change this path to post.view and I'll save that uh, let's just see if this is working so if I go to slash post slash one let's say then it's loading our post page now and this should load regardless of what we put here which it does so now on the home page, I'm going to add some links to a few different posts. So I'm going to open up the home page, which is in views, home.view. And I'm going to get rid of this hello world component and get rid of this import and this components object as well. And we can also actually just delete this hello world component in the components folder. So I'll delete that and save this home.view. Uh, let's add some links here to a few different posts below this view logo. So I'll just add a unordered list and then a list item and then I'll add a router link component and uh, I'll just put the text my first post in there and then I'll add a to prop to this router link and um, we'll pass in an object here and um, we'll pass in a name property to tell this link which route it should go to. And we want it to go to the root with the name post. So I'll set this to post. And then I'll add a params object and pass in this ID that it's going to be expecting. So in this first link, I'll just set that ID to one. And I'll save that. Uh, let's see if it's working. So we can see the link there. And if we click on it, we're now at post slash one. And we're on the post page. So I'll just jump back to the home page and I'll just add a little bit of style to get rid of these bullet points here. So a lot of style block. And we'll just style the UL and set list style to none, which should get rid of these bullets. And I'll set the padding to zero as well. 
to get rid of this padding on the left because it's not quite in the center there. Okay, and now I'll add a couple more links to a couple of different posts. So I'll duplicate this LI a couple of times, uh, change the text in the second one to my second post, and then my third post in the third one. And in the second one, we'll set the ID to two. And in the third one, we'll set the ID to three. So we'll save that. We can now see a few different links, which are all working correctly. We can see slash two on the second one, and then slash three on the third one. Uh, let's pass another parameter to each of these router links with a title, which we can display on the post page here, and which we can also use in our document title here as well. So we're going to add another property to each of these, and we'll just call it title. And we'll set the first one to my first post. Uh, I'll just update the second one to my second post, and then the third one to my third post. And I'll save that. I'm just going to reload. And if we click on my first post, we're still logging out the to variable in our router file here. And if we look in the params object, we can see this title property, my first post. So first of all, let's use that to spit out the post name on the post page. So we'll open up post.view and replace the contents of this heading with double curly braces. And then to access the current root information, we can just do $root.params and then the name of the param, which is title. Save that. And we now see my first post here. And if we go to my second post, we see my second post. So let's also display this post name in our browser tab as well. So I'll jump back to index.js in the router folder and to this before each hook. And so we're already adding the app title and the root name here. And what we want to do is if we have a parameter called title, at two.params.title. Then we also want to add that to the document.title, the title tag on the index.html page as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this string in a variable. Uh, let's call it document title. And then we'll set document.title to that variable. And then we want to check if we have this title parameter. So what we can do is if two.params.title, then we'll also append this title to this document title variable, and we should then see it in our browser tab. So we can just do document title plus equals to append it to this string that we've already created. Uh, I'll use backticks here and we'll add a space, a dash, and then we'll interpolate this title, which is at two.params.title. And uh, I'll save that. Uh, just jump back to the home page. And if we jump to my first post, we see my first post in the browser tab. And if we jump to my second post, we see my second post in the browser tab. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this video above where I create an app with Vue.js and Vuetify in just 30 minutes. And also click that subscribe thing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.